Acute appendicitis is one of the most common surgical emergencies, typically presenting with right lower quadrant pain due to inflammation of the veriform appendix or the appendix. It most commonly affects adolescents and young adults, but can occur at any age. Prompt diagnosis and recognition are crucial to avoid complications such as perforation and sepsis. Let's revise some anatomy. The appendix is a narrow, blind-ended tube arising from the posterior medial wall of the cecum, approximately 2 to 3 centimeters below the ileocecal valve. It averages 8 to 10 centimeters in length and is suspended by the mesoappendix, which contains the appendiceal artery, a branch of the iliocolic artery from the superior mesenteric artery. Its variable position can include retrocecal, pelvic, subsecal, preilial, or postilial, can influence the clinical presentation and where the pain is located. So the clinical presentation, the classic symptoms of appendicitis begin with vague periumbilical pain that then localizes to the right lower quadrant over 12 to 24 hours. This may be accompanied by anorexia, so uh, reduced appetite, nausea, vomiting, fever, and constipation or diarrhea. Examination may reveal rebound tenderness, guarding, and localized peritonism. Rebound tenderness is a sign that refers to pain or discomfort felt upon the release of pressure from the abdomen where you are palpating or feeling. Signs such as the rovsings, psoas, or obturator signs may be present in appendicitis, depending on the location of the appendix. Children may present differently with nonspecific abdominal pain, irritability, fever, or gastrointestinal symptoms such as vomiting or diarrhea. Diagnosis in this group can be delayed due to atypical features and limited communication. Elderly and immunosuppressed patients may present with subtle signs and are more prone to complications. So why does appendicitis occur? Well, the thought is that there's obstruction of the appendiceal lumen, and this can be due to fecal lith, lymphoid hyperplasia, so the lymph glands here are becoming bigger, causing an obstruction of that lumen, the appendiceal lumen, or rarely a cancer, neoplasm. And essentially an obstruction of that lumen or that tunnel leads to increased intraluminal pressure which then can lead to you know, more bacteria proliferating because we normally have bacteria around this area. It can lead to ischemia, lack of blood supply, and eventually transmural inflammation. If untreated, this whole process of inflammation and ischemia can result in perforation, abscess formation due to the bacterial overgrowth, or obviously with perforation, peritonism or peritonitis. The risk factors for developing appendicitis includes adolescents and young adults, male sex, but again, it occurs in both women and men, low fiber diet, family history of appendicitis, and recent viral gastrointestinal infections. In terms of investigations, what is typically seen is an elevated neutrophilic count, or so neutrophilia. A CRP is often elevated because of the inflammatory process. Uh, urinalysis and beta HCG are important to rule out other differentials, such as UTI or pregnancy. Imaging. Ultrasound is typically first-line investigation of imaging in children and in pregnancy. CT abdomen has high diagnostic accuracy. MRI is obviously another option for pregnancy if CT scans are contraindicated or the diagnosis is uncertain.
But typically, the diagnosis is a clinical one, and a surgical review is important. Complication of appendicitis, we have already mentioned it earlier, but includes perforation of the appendix. And this can then lead to peritonitis or inflammation of the peritoneum that lines the abdominal cavity. Appendiceal abscess or phlegmon can occur because remember there is the bacterial perforation and a small micro perforation can cause an abscess and if perforated completely can lead to sepsis. Small bowel obstruction can occur. Stump appendicitis is a rare surgical uh, recurrence of inflammation of the appendix that has been cut out. Of course, in rare circumstances, when you have sepsis, which is where the bacteria enters the bloodstream, this bacteria can then travel to the liver, resulting in hepatic abscess or portal pyemia. Management of appendicitis in uncomplicated cases, laparoscopic appendectomy is first line, and typically a single pre-op antibiotic dose is given. In complicated cases, such as when you have an abscess or an infection, IV antibiotics is very important. Image-guided drainage can be a possibility, but typically there is an interval appendectomy after six weeks. So in summary, appendicitis is a time-sensitive diagnosis requiring clinical vigilance, particularly in atypical presentation. Imaging supports diagnosis, especially in uncertain cases, but typically it's a clinical diagnosis. And early surgical intervention reduces the risk of perforation and long-term complications.